Hello and welcome to another episode of Mind Ki Baat where we discuss the part that really matters your mind or more specifically mental health I am your host Shardul and in this episode and the one after that we'll discuss trauma in detail I don't imagine that we'll be able to cover every aspect of it uh, you know everything that falls under the definition of trauma but I hope these episodes act as a window into the life of a person who who has been traumatized and is going through with it or has been through one of the worst experiences a person can have in their lives. I used to yell and scream at nights and my parents used to hold me tight just to remind me that I was not alone. Like the amount of times I had said no got me scared. Eating scared me. Sleeping scared me. Walking scared me. I was in class 12 at that time. There was just so much in my head that I was blaming myself. I for. wanted to scream, but all the screams were just inside my head and I couldn't ask for help. This is a News Laundry podcast and you're listening to Mind Ki Baat. This episode will exclusively focus on trauma faced by women due to sexual assault, you know, violence, be it domestic violence, but primarily what happens to women in our society. Although the issue is discussed on societal level a lot, people know about this but don't really understand what it means to be traumatized, how people go through their lives after something like this has happened. And I hope the people who listen to this at least get a idea in broad strokes what are the major causes of not just trauma but how people deal with it and how they struggle with this experience because for most of us who read this through news or don't read news but just hear them in hear them on social media or many other avenues we just discard them in couple of days or at most a week it becomes just a footnote you know something we read or something we heard So one more disclaimer before I introduce our guests we couldn't find anyone who would agree to speak to us and fit in our schedule there were some who were willing to speak to us but couldn't give us time but there were also a few women who wanted to speak but didn't because of many personal reasons let me rephrase that because they were afraid of some kind of backlash or repercussion when they discuss this publicly and if this doesn't tell you the scale and you know seriousness of this problem then i don't know what else will with that let me go to both of our wonderful guests who were generous enough to make space in their schedules for this conversation our first guest is divya dawar divya is the co-founder and senior clinical psychologist at meas which is an organization which primarily focuses on mental health awareness support and also providing legal rights for people who need them she works with her clients in assessing diagnosing and managing their conditions and works with a lot of women uh, women who have faced sexual or other types of violence in their lives welcome divya welcome to news laundry thank you so much for having me here our second guest is nidhi suresh well nidhi is no stranger to the listeners who've been associated with news laundry hello nidhi hi shardu uh, but for those who don't know her Nidhi is an exceptional journalist who is currently working as a correspondent with Deutsche Welle (DW), right? Yes. I am not good with German. <laughs> Neither uh, be- am I. <laughs> <laughs> Before that, she worked with News Laundry for three years and has also written for Himal Magazine, Scroll, Caravan, and many other reputed publications. She has and continues to report on gender-based violence, violence against women. and in my personal opinion she has a knack for finding out these kind of issues which are being unnoticed in public mm-hmm. and right very i would not say informative because that seems to limit the trauma of the person who is being discussed but as an editor and as a person who is involved in journalism very good report so welcome nidhi thank you thank you shadur before i go to our guest a few things to note about you know gender based violence and sexual violence in india almost everyone knows that sexual assault and violence against women is a big problem in india despite all the problems in media in our system nobody refutes this reality but numbers do help us gauge the magnitude of a problem 
So let's look at them. According to Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementations report released in March 2023, 22.8 lakh crimes were committed against women between 2016 to 2021. But these cases include all types of crimes. If we look at the violent crimes and crimes of assaults on women, which are charged under Section 354 of IPC, 5.2 lakh cases were registered in these six years. The number of reported kidnappings and abductions was 4.14 lakhs and the number of rapes and sexual assault complaints were 1.96 lakhs. Now, anyone who knows the Indian legal system would tell you that these are registered numbers, especially when it comes to sexual assaults and rape. There are multitude of societal, economical and personal reasons which compel and sometimes force women to not report a crime or an attempt of crime against herself. In fact, the number of unreported crimes, especially violent crimes against women, is still significantly larger than the reported number. And you'll find that sociologists, legal experts and social workers of all ideologies agree on this. With that in mind, let's listen to what our guests have to say. And Although this episode is about violence against women and trauma, but this happens with children who get abused too. And Definitely. I have no gumption in accepting like it. Uh, I juggled with this for a long time and it feels like it's a deep breath before the plunge. Like this nicety would be followed by something much worse, exactly. which we're not used to. So it's, it's, is this the same thing like what children it's feel? It's most. See, in when it comes to trauma, it is almost like this with everybody. Because if, if it, there's a constant abuser in mm -hmm. this situation, if there's a constant abuser, uh, and there, it's it's more so a regular affair. Yes. Then it is very difficult to for this person to kind of come out of that zone, that headspace. However, if it is an intermittent sort of placed or the intervals are not fixed, they're variable intervals, and there's yes. some moment where this person will suddenly erupt. Then you will notice that these individuals go into a shock mode every time that happens, and then. Usually, the reason, and coming back to that question that you had asked, the reason why they kind of shut themselves up is because usually the abuser will come back and apologize. Mm. So you have, because see, to maintain that structure, the abuser has to bring back the seduction phase. They have to maintain that I am doing this for you or I am here for you. There is nobody else for you. I have to maintain that story structure. If this person, if the victim realizes when that resurfacing is actually occurring is when they're realizing that there are other people that exist who can get me out of this. Mm -hmm. But until that point, it's just them and the abuser. And the abuser is the dominant party who has made it very, very clear to this person that they are there for them and nobody else is there for them. It's very difficult for a victim to then get out of this headspace. That is why that whole stage lasts. It can last weeks, it can last months, it can last years for people. And then for a lot of people especially in our country because see we are community set up so it's yes. more difficult for us to kind of get out of relationships whereas the western culture is more individualistic yes. they have been taught to be by themselves very independently yes. more so than us are yeah. usually yeah. because of the community structure and the society that we live in it's even more difficult for this person to get out and then they just come to terms with their fate they're like, it's easier pleasing one abuser than talking to 100 people and explaining them my story. And as Nidhi puts it, these 100 people don't even, or maybe not all 100, but at least 80 of them will not even believe my story. So it's me against all these people who don't want to believe me versus me against one abuser who most people don't think can kill them. But yes, this one abuser, it's easier in my headspace. Yeah. I just want to add yeah, yeah, something please. to that. I mean, I was just thinking when you were saying that there was this one uh, survivor I had met who was going through an ordeal of a court case. Mm -hmm. And in in passing, we had finished our interview. We Everything was done. But she said something in passing that always stuck with me that I, she, she just said, you know, I think the most kindest thing that a rapist can do to a woman is to actually kill her after this. You know, don't let her stay alive to to see all the people she loves around her fail her over and over again. Yes. You know, and and also I think it's really, imp and this is going back to the conversation of trust, you know, when you were saying that mm. why does it become so difficult to trust others who may not have been involved in this yeah. incident. There is, sexual violence conversation is 
is almost always about power right it's yes. it's a power thing yes. it's a power thing it's never like, about sex rape is not about sex yes. it's it's not that the rapist can't get sex <laughs> it's a feeling of of wanting to overpower someone and show yes. somebody their place put someone in a place and feel a certain stature or place for yourself in many different ways it plays out um and a lot of the times for a woman who and statistics shows that it often happens with people you trust yes right the reporting that we do is actually the the the, the incidents which occur rarely where yeah where it's the inverse someone, part which gets reported more yeah where yes. suddenly it happens when you're walking across the road yes. what is more common is it's your uncle it's your father it's it's your yes. you know older person in the family it's the person you got married to yes um it's anyone who's around you who you trust and when that happens i feel like it shakes the entire idea of trust yes right like how do you ever trust anyone in a position of power to not abuse you yes um so of course you don't have a, an idea of trust or love and in these trusted relationships is also where you're learning love right you see yes. what love means what what it could entail yeah. and when love entails abuse like you said in parental relationships if your parent is going to hit a child and say i did this for your good how do you then love a partner who doesn't hit you yeah. or believe that it is love right you don't really know what yeah, to expect yeah it leads to all sorts of dysfunctional relationships exactly and it's the same with sexual violence i feel like that that's why your the world view of love and trust gets entirely shaken some facts about what nidhi mentioned about the nature of abusers especially for children according to ywca study of 2017 about 93% of children who are victims of sexual abuse know their abuser less than 10% of sexually abused children are abused by strangers nearly 70% of all reported sexual assaults happen to children of ages 17 or less another saddening but illuminating fact one in four girls and one in six boys will be sexually abused before they turn 18 and this is global data uh, another data set coming out of this 12.3% of women were age 10 or younger at the time of their first rape or sexual victimization and 30% of women were between the ages of 11 and 17 96% of people who sexually abuse children are males 76% are married men and 76.8% of people who sexually abuse children are adults that was just a snippet for the full podcast head over to newslaundry.com and while you're at it Don't forget to power the work we do by subscribing to News Laundry and paying to keep news free and independent. The subscription model is something that keeps News Laundry afloat, but we need hundreds of thousands of people to completely transform the news ecosystem. So you pay for news so it serves you. So click on the link with this video, subscribe to News Laundry and pay to keep news free aur garv se kaho mere kharch par azad hai khabrein.